Did you know that J. Robert Oppenheimer, often dubbed the father of the atomic bomb, shares a striking parallel with Prometheus, the ancient Greek titan? This comparison isn't drawn from a shared godlike intellect, but rather a tale of gifts bestowed, consequences faced, and deep-seated remorse. Oppenheimer's life was a journey marked by towering achievements and profound dilemmas. His early fascination with the cosmos's mysteries set the stage for his pivotal role in one of the 20th century's most significant scientific advancements. Oppenheimer's life story is a testament to the power and peril of knowledge. As we unravel his narrative, we'll draw the lines connecting this brilliant physicist and Prometheus, revealing a tale of ambition, responsibility, and the price of progress. Now let's turn the pages of history and walk through the timeline of Oppenheimer's life, a journey that mirrors the myth of Prometheus in its highs and lows. Important years in the life of Oppenheimer. 1904, born on April 22nd in New York, USA. 1922, enrolled at Harvard University, entering the world of chemistry. 1926, moved to the University of Göttingen to study under Max Born. 1927, received a PhD in physics from the University of Göttingen. 1936, became a professor at the University of California, Berkeley. 1942, appointed as the scientific director of the Manhattan Project. 1945, on July 16th, he led the Trinity Test, the first successful test of the atomic bomb in the New Mexico desert. 1954, accused of harboring communist ties, he lost his security clearance. 1967, died on February 18th in Princeton, New Jersey, USA, at the age of 62 due to throat cancer. In the bustling heart of New York City, on April 22nd, 1904, a child named J. Robert Oppenheimer was born into a world on the cusp of a scientific revolution. His mother, Ella, a painter, and his father, Julius, a successful textile importer, were the first audience to his budding intellectual brilliance. His early education at Manhattan's Ethical Culture School was not just a journey through textbooks, but a voyage into the vast cosmos of knowledge. The city around him, pulsating with a rhythm of progress and innovation, was a grand stage set for the young prodigy. Oppenheimer's fascination with the mysteries of the universe began to take root in this vibrant backdrop. These early years were the first notes in the symphony of his life, a melody that would eventually resonate through the halls of scientific history. His first hobby, gathering rocks and minerals, was a precursor to a lifelong trip into the heart of science. This journey eventually led him to the hollowed halls of Harvard University, where a young Oppenheimer found himself drawn to the enigmatic world of chemistry. Yet the allure of theoretical physics truly captured his intellect. His pursuit of knowledge led him across the Atlantic to the University of Göttingen in Germany, a beacon of scientific innovation. Under the gray skies of Göttingen, Oppenheimer delved into the mysteries of quantum physics, his mind dancing with particles and probabilities. The university's grand lecture halls echoed the theories of the greatest minds in physics, and Oppenheimer was a keen listener, absorbing every word. His time in Germany was not just a period of academic achievement, but a journey of intellectual exploration. As he navigated the complex landscape of quantum physics, Oppenheimer laid the foundation for his future role in one of the most significant scientific advancements of the 20th century. Oppenheimer's burning passion for physics led him to the University of California, Berkeley, where he began his academic career. There, amidst the grandeur of the university's neoclassic architecture, Oppenheimer's brilliance shone brightly. His lectures were a symphony of ideas, resonating with the theories of quantum mechanics and the mysteries of the cosmos. His contributions to theoretical physics were as profound as they were pioneering. He delved into the heart of atoms, unraveled the secrets of cosmic rays, and explored the enigmatic world of quantum field theory. His work was not just about understanding the universe, but pushing the boundaries of what was possible in physics. Amidst the whirlwind of scientific discovery and political intrigue, Oppenheimer found solace in the comforts of family life. He married Catherine Poenig, a radical Berkeley student in 1940. Together they had two children, Peter and Catherine. His family life offered a counterpoint to his intense professional pursuits, grounding him amidst the tumultuous events of his career. The love and support of his family were his refuge during the trials and tribulations that marked his later years. The Manhattan Project beckoned Oppenheimer in 1942. He was appointed the scientific director 
a role that would thrust him into the epicenter of a scientific endeavor of unprecedented scale and consequence. Oppenheimer led a team of the brightest minds of the era in the secluded landscape of Los Alamos, New Mexico. Their mission was as formidable as it was secretive, to harness the destructive power of the atom. The stakes were high, and the world's weight rested on their shoulders. Their relentless efforts culminated on a fateful day in July 1945. The New Mexico desert bore witness to the first successful test of the atomic bomb, a spectacle of terrifying beauty that marked a turning point in human history. As the mushroom cloud unfurled in the sky, Oppenheimer's life too was irrevocably altered. The physicist had become the architect of a new age, the age of the atomic bomb. The scientists opened Pandora's box, and the world would never be the same again. This pivotal moment marked a significant milestone in Oppenheimer's career and set the stage for the profound dilemmas he would face in the years to come. In the wake of World War II, Oppenheimer found himself standing in the ashes of the old world, a key architect of the new one born in a blinding flash of atomic energy. A profound sense of remorse overshadowed the euphoria of scientific achievement. His words, borrowed from the Bhagavad Gita, echoed the paradox of his triumph. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. In these post-war years, Oppenheimer transformed from a harbinger of destruction to a voice of conscience, advocating for international control of nuclear weapons. But Oppenheimer's life took a dramatic turn very soon. Once hailed as a national hero, the physicist was at the center of a political storm. Accusations of communist ties, fueled by the paranoia of the Cold War, cast a long shadow over his achievements. In 1954, these allegations culminated in a trial that would strip him of his security clearance, tarnishing his reputation and marking the end of his influence in policymaking. This period of Oppenheimer's life contrasted starkly with his earlier triumphs, a testament to the volatile intersection of science and politics. A quiet resilience marked the final chapter of Oppenheimer's life. Despite the public disgrace and the loss of his political influence, he kept contributing to the scientific community. He returned to academia, taking on a role at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. However, his health began to decline, and in 1967, he succumbed to throat cancer, passing away at 62. Oppenheimer's legacy, as intricate as the man himself, is a blend of groundbreaking contributions to physics and the indelible imprint of the atomic bomb. His life story is a cautionary tale about the ethical quandaries in science, sparking ongoing debates. Despite controversies, his influence in physics is enduring, reminding us of the potency of knowledge and its accompanying responsibility. When we look at the life story of J. Robert Oppenheimer, the parallels with the tale of Prometheus become strikingly clear. Just like the tragic hero Prometheus, who stole fire from the gods to give to humanity, Oppenheimer unlocked the Adam's secrets, forever altering the course of history. But with this gift came a heavy price. The atomic fire, once unleashed, could not be contained, casting a long shadow of destruction and fear. He lived the rest of his life in the shade of this duality, grappling with the moral implications of his work. Enjoyed our video? It will help us a lot if you hit the like button. Now choose the next one to watch.